We have seen the pictures. We know there's a crisis in Puerto Rico. Millions of people are suffering in Hurricane Maria's wake. And our Alex Hagan, the first local reporter to go to Puerto Rico, and he says the pictures only begin to scratch the surface of the widespread pain there. Alex traveled with a local nonprofit in their quest to save as many people as they can. Alex? Well, Michael Kelly, we traveled to San Juan, a city with no power, no water, few supplies, seeing everything firsthand. It's clear it will take years for the island to recover. On this Hawker 800, take all hands on deck. It's all about the unknown. I feel optimistic. The crew saw the pictures, heard the stories. No power, there's limited water. The cruise ship's not. But it wasn't until we arrived at the East La Grande Airport in San Juan that we truly understood the scope of the tragedy. It's definitely very crazy. Very sad. Planes destroyed, trees down, people waiting in scorching heat, hoping for a plane to take them out of here. This is just going to be a huge logistics challenge. But once we got in the car, heading into the heart of San Juan, that's where we saw the struggle up close. We had people out of work for a week. And then Maria hit, can't get food, water, or anything. As we drove to our destination, yes, there was damage. But it was the faces of the thousands of people desperately looking for supplies, waiting four hours for gas. We saw the fear, the stress, and the turmoil. Been very hard, very hard. Scarlett Ramirez came to San Juan after she rode out the storm in the small town of Arecibo, west of San Juan. Do something Her home about. is OK. But she has nothing. I didn't have much water, you know, to end this. We don't know when it's coming back. The stories coming out of Puerto Rico are, in fact, much worse than Scarlett's. Millions desperate for help, for aid. And on this island, it's tough. People are there, and what is around there? The, the fallen trees, the wires, the sinkholes, no water, sitting in lobbies because elevators don't work. You know, the emotional and the human tragedy is just absolutely you know stares you in the face the hope now we hope so we hope so for people like scarlet is our country the united states does whatever it can to help this struggling island we're, we're praying that uh, god helps us and we can make this through power is expected to be out for months crews from all over the united states will continue to do their best like the one i was with to go down to Puerto Rico, lend their support, and rescue those in need. And actually, I just spoke with the nonprofit that uh, went on the trip with, and they are planning to send more crews down, bigger planes actually, Thank and goodness. rescue more of the people like we saw today. Just let it, you know, let it sink in for a second. No power for months. When you know we dealt with it here for days, some people in our area, Fort Pierce, Belle Glade, for more than a week or so. I mean, that's unimaginable in this, in our lifetime, mm -hmm. when you're so used to conveniences. It's just unbelievable. And I was just going to mention that we, you know, with Hurricane Irma and what we experienced, yeah. and that was very tough. And then you go and you witness something mm -hmm. like that down there, and what they're dealing with, mm -hmm. it just really puts it into perspective, and you really have to see it firsthand mm -hmm. and it was very emotional as they were saying. Well, thank yeah. you for offering that perspective, painful though it is. And we do see the rallying cry, the realization all the way to Capitol Hill that this needs to be a long-term all-in effort. So I know Definitely you'll keep us posted that, yeah. on that. Thank Alex, you, Alex. thank you.